define the preliminary geometrical units. For each of this ge uh, preliminary geometrical unit, we need to put an average, at least an average uh, parameter in this GMU, as we see in the table at slides before, we see before. <clears throat> Afterwards, moving to the feasibility, in this case, we need to get a definitive GMUs, definitive geometrical units, understand the variability, not only the average or median, it's the variability important for each, for each parameter, and integrate the geometrical model into the block model. <coughs> And between the feasibility and the operation, we need to validate the, the geometrical unit with large samples and apply the geometrical unit to the planning of the long and medium term planning. Finally, for the operation, it's important to integrate all this geometrical model into the short mining and, and plant uh, planning. One concept, important concept in here is sometimes when the projects are accelerated, too much accelerated, some disciplines are left behind. And this is a very, very inconvenient, this is really inconvenient for the process development. So we need to put all the disciplines in the same level for each stage. For feasibility, we need appropriate feasibility for geomechanics, geological model, and geometallurgy as well. Don't forget it. Please, don't forget it. We have finished with the review, and finally, we want to um, check this for cases. Okay. First of all, we are going to talk about sampling, the importance of sampling. Support. Support. What is support? Support is the volume in which actual variables measured. For instance, plan views showing the same block model for total copper estimation, the only difference is the size of the block. One by one, five by five, and finally, 25 by 25 meters <clears throat> for the blocks. What is the conclusion here in this figure? What about the variability? What can we say? Probably we could realize that the larger the support, the lesser the variance. So, the support is very, very important to recognize the variance of a parameter. <coughs> Sampling, it's very important, very important thing. It's a basic for everything. For instance, we have this uh, section, this beautiful truck or took, <laughs> as others say. And imagine this is drill holes. We would like to um, sample in this uh, um, domain. But what happened here? This is a not representative sampling. Why? Look at the size of this support, 50 meters. Look at the scale. So we are taking samples of 50 meters, like maybe representing all the, the, um, the width of this uh, mantle in here. It's, it's too much. So it's impossible to recognize any variability using this large of 
is size of the samples. So, as we said, large support reduce variance. So this is wrong. This is not a good idea. Let's move to another example. What is the problem in here? What do you think? Let's take a look on these samples. We have long samples and very small, very different size of samples, very different support. So different support, different, different variants. So we are making afterwards an analysis of this data with these different variants. So this is wrong as well. We need to try to keep the same support for the samples. The next one. This is not representative either, but why? We have the same length, same size, same support, not very long, very large, sorry. What is the problem here? This is a, if, you, if, if we can see here, this is increment. Do you know the, the, the meaning of increment? Increments creates one sample. So we have four operation of sampling. Okay. For creating one sample. So we are mixing we are mixing. Can you, can you sorry man, can you please uh, Show the, the presentation again. Ah, okay. Sorry, it's a little Something's bit happened. interrupted. So yeah, yeah, no, no worries. Yeah, no worries. Something happened with the. Okay. Yeah. Please continue, man. Okay. Okay, I don't know what happened, but uh, okay. As was I, as I say, um, this one is not is completely inconvenient for geometallurgy because in geometallurgy we we want to identify the variability, what happened in here and in here and in here and in here. So mixing different increments to create a sample, this is a very bad idea. This is typical of metallurgical testing, but never of, never for a metallurgy. Finally, we could talk about representative sampling. In this case, different samples, well distributed in space, and same support, same size. This is something appropriate for our purpose. A brief parenthesis. We are using this sampling example. We could talk about bond work index Bond work index is a um, test. The test used this mill, okay, and granulometric classific classification, distribution of granulometry. The test used a material from 1.7 millimeters as a feed, and the product is 0 0.1 millimeters. Okay, this is the lab mill. And this is a very old um, test, but it's completely uh, used nowadays. It's like the something, someone said something like a biblical, like a, like a, shall we say, uh, it's kind of, I don't know, it's very, very old uh, test, but continue used by the industry. 
And the, the good thing of this, uh, uh, the, pro the purpose of this um, test is uh, <clears throat> estimate the energy consumption for industrial volumes. This one is critical, critical because energy is the most important cost of the in the plants. So we have this um, testing. Okay. Look at this. We have same deposit. Okay. Same deposit. Same number of samples. Number of testing of bond work index in here. This is the bond work index, the X. And this is the accumulated in the Y axis. The median is the same. Can you see? 13 something is the same. No, no, it's not the same. No, wait. I would like to say that look at the variability. Variability is different because in the left we have representative sample, and the right we have not representative sample. Same model, same material, same everything. And maybe one day, if you are you are working on this, uh, people from processing can say something like, oh, hey, 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 we need to design our layout of the plant. So please tell us the 80%, 80% is right, yeah, we agree, the 80% of the distribution of the bond work index. Okay, so look at this, the 80% of distribution for a proper representative sample is 17. For a um, the not representative sample is less than 16. What is the impact of this? Okay, the impact is probably the process, the process design might overestimate the throughput of the plant. So using this data, they could think that the, the production going to be higher than in reality going to be. So, to sum up, sampling is a very important topic, not only in geology, but also in geometallurgy. Rep uh, representative sampling is key. Same variable, another example, another case, case two, okay? The same. Hardness, energy consumption, bond work index. Let's talk about the mean zones, different mean zones. Afterwards, you can check this in detail. The important thing in here is this section is showing the effect of supergene alteration on all hardness. Upper zones display these samples, this rock with cracks, with voids, and philic or argilic alteration. But deeper zones, like this one, correspond with almost intact rock. So look at these numbers. What is happening in here? The deeper the zone, the harder the ore, showing clearly the effect of supergene process on the, on the hardness of the rock. So, uh, I would like to 
ask, ask you something. Can you imagine what could happen if, if the plant were designed only considering samples selected from surface? Only because taking samples from here is cheaper and easier? Can you imagine what could happen? This is a very common mistake. It's like, oh, no, no worries, no worries. And we need to design a, a layout for the plant. OK, take a, a sample, a sample from the, the pit, like this. OK, so mesons are very important for hardness. Geological model, geological domains are very important for geometallurgy. Okay, thickeners. I, I don't know if you have seen this before in, or in the operations. The thickeners, this is the thickeners, these uh, facilities. Thickener is critical to allow recovering of at least 30% of the water uh, process, the process water. Prior to sending this uh, tail salary to the final deposition, the capacity of thickener might be strongly affected by clay content, reducing sedimentation rate and consequently water recovery. Okay. In this example, this is a real, the act, an actual example. This is an epithermal deposit with an advanced orogenic alteration, which displays different clay species, okay? Kaolinite, zones with kaolinite, zones with illite, and zones with pyrophyllite, pyrophyllite, phyllite, pyrophyllite, okay? So, this triangular graph resumes the result of, of the sedimentation rest, uh, rate testing. The results are in here. This is small circles. So the small circles uh, indicate the composition in terms of pyrophyllite, elite, and kaolinite. The colored bands, this one, represents higher, this one, in red, and lower, in greenish, uh, sedimentation rates. This is the sedimentation rate. So in red is over four, and green, this green, dark green, is less than one, imagine. So from this graph, we can um, understand the clear dependence between the type of clay and the sedimentation rate. Zones with kaolinite, kaolinite in, uh, in the deposit will exhibit the higher sedimentation, the highest sedimentation rate. rate. And in this way, in this manner, the thickener, when processed this material, will have a higher capacity for water recovery. In this case study, a sound mineralogical characterization and modeling is key for design the size and number of thickeners required for the process. So, can you, can you note this, the importance of mineralogy? Imagine mineralogy, how impact in the mineralogy, mineralogical characterization on this process. This process is really uh, ahead from geologists, the typical geologists. This is after concentrator plan. After concentrator plan, we have this 
problem with terminology. Can you notice? It's amazing. And it's amazing as well the relationship between res metallurgical results and mineralogy. It's really nice, in my opinion. Finally, we want to talk about the QAQC, Quality Assurance Quality Control for Metallurgical or Geometallurgical um, Studies. Okay, let's talk about flotation. Flotation, maybe all of you are familiarized with this concept. This is a laboratory uh, flotation cell. Okay, this is the cell, it's really small. And this uh, impeller is rotating here. We put the, as a regular concentrator plant, a small scale. We put the water, the collectors, the lime, the, the mineral, the mineral in here, and create this flotation process. But when we make this small scale test of flotation, how can we assure, be sure that this one is properly conducted? What if the technician is not doing the, the right uh, procedure. How can we um, identify that condition? One way of doing this, this quality control, is the following, it's the next. Please consider the flotation cell, this one. In the flotation cell, we put a feed of material. Yes, a milled material. We obtain a concentrate and a residual, 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 residual tail. The tail contains the mostly the material we are not interested, economically interested. We have two figures in here, two expressions. The capital is the mass. And the lowercase is the grade, okay? In other words, this is the mass for the feed, and this is the grade for the feed. For instance, copper grade. Also, we have the mass of the concentrate and the grade for the concentrate. In the same manner, the tail has a mass and this one has a grade. What if we consider the metal? What is the metal balance? Let's check this. The metal balance, in this case the, the copper, in the feed is mass of the mineral uh, multiplied by uh, grade equal to this combination. Can you see? This in and this two out mass times grade of concentrate plus mass of tail times grade of tail. This is the metal balance. So we can take advantage of this definition because we can actually calculate a grade for the feed using all these terms. Let's make an example of this. Remember, metal balance indicates that the grade of the feed is this expression. In addition, we have this grade, which is the assay, the assay for the sample. So we want to, we have this one previous, prior to the test. After the test, we can obtain this one, okay? 
Let's check. We have, let's check through the formula. Mass of concentrate times rate of concentrate plus mass of chain times grade of chain. All of this expression divided by mass of feed. If we resolve this, we obtain 0 0.89. Can you see? So we have two grades for the feed, the assay grade and the calculated grade. If the test was properly conducted, this result must be very, very similar to this one. We can calculate the relative error of the metal using this expression. In this case is minus 2.3. And we can use this regular chart for all the metallurgical tests and control all the metallurgical tests. And we can now say, oh, OK, man, we obtain a really, really good result if we compare the cover in the, of the assay is very, very, very similar to the copper in uh, the feed calculated using this metal balance. As final words, okay, we, we can say that geometallurgy is a multidisciplinary approach for the reconnaissance of metallurgical parameter variability in the deposit. The aim, what is the, the aim? The aim is diminishing of uncertainty in mining projects and operations. Geometallurgy emerges from project and operation with more complex ore and challenging social and environmental scenarios. Model, modeling and estimation are very similar to grades, but it is more difficult seen the lower or the low number of available samples. This is a drawback, shall we say. Low number of samples compared with the assay. More complicated modeling estimation. <clears throat> OK, the main goal for mining professional, all of us in this um, conference, is not thinking in our parcels, in our areas, particular areas. This is not the best goal as, a, as an organization. Uh, to reach the goal, which is the best for organization, we need to change the paradigm. We need to put all the people in this organization focus on the increasing the production and increasing and decreasing, increasing production of metal and decreasing the cost. Generate less impact in communities, communities in the environment. We can reduce all this paradigm and call it geometallurgy, which is a col collaborative tool that facilitates the integration of all the mining, mining processes in the mining professional as well. Thank you every one of us. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Thanks uh, Christian, uh, for, for the presentation. presentation. Now we will have like 15 to 20 minutes for Q&A session or discussion. So please, if you have any concerns, or if you have questions, uh, please unmute your microphone. And if you have signal problem or the audio problems, please you can send a chat and then we'll read it for you. So please. I have one question. OK, uh, can you? Uh, make your video appear as well so we can know you and we can 
Uh, yeah, sure. would be nice. Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. Hello, uh, I'm Masmi. Um, right now I'm in uh, Africa in the mine site. Uh, what I'd like to uh, ask, uh, you mentioned about the um, the early stages of the um, project development to consider this geometallurgy uh, from, from what I'm, what I've been uh, experienced, this is very, very difficult. Uh, in early stage, we, we the geologists only concerns about how to find the, um, to determine the ore, the quantity, the quality, not, not so much into the processing. Uh, besides the concerns in geometallurgy uh, usually not known until we actually doing the mining processes uh, i'll give you one example in the the property that i worked before yeah it's um, a green stone belt gold deposit they have hello can, can you still hear me Perfectly. Yes, we yeah. can. Okay, so okay, so so in in the greenstone belt, it's, it's supposed to be um, it's supposed to be a very relatively homogeneous uh, greenstone hosted gold deposit, but um, about a couple of years into production. Uh, we found a problem about the different recoveries uh, on different side of the the deposit. Even though it looks exactly the same, it's just a green stone. It's, it has the, the same similar uh, foliation. It has a similar um, uh, well, general appearance, but in reality, the 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 um, the response from the plant is very, very different. And um, so after we found this problem, we, we actually uh, did a lot of study in the in geochem and a lot of studies in the different approach and assays. Like uh, we introduced the uh, screen fire assay instead of just your fire assay. So the understanding about the um, the differences in the size of the gold and also the um, the uh, lesser minerals that that associated with the deposit is acquired much much later on, not in the early stage. Um, so my question is how how actually we can we can use that we, how we actually can achieve that uh, in the early stage uh, like in the early explorations and or the, even in the feasibility study stage to mind you the feasibility uh, study is uh, we spend a lot of money in in, in that process and um, we hired a lot of uh, different, very expensive consultants for that. And we still miss this. We still miss the one of the uh, big puzzles in this uh, deposit. So can you explain how can we achieve that? Thank you. Thank you, Masni. Um... I, I was was thinking when you told this uh, story uh, about how useful could be have geometallurgy in this uh, example because if we could uh, measure the um, the money. Uh, 
it's probably the lost of money in this operation for this uh, uh, unknown less recovery of gold. So imagine how many we could lost and how many we could spend to obtain or get a maybe a not really expensive uh, geometrical characterization. So this is my first thought about this. It's usual that we lost much money when we react. And it's much better when we plan and act and model. And about your specific question, uh, when we are in early stage, we don't have to have, we, we don't need a um, large amount of samples for geomet or understand in details the processing for saying, ah, we, we, are, we are only exploration geologists, we have no idea what is going to happen with this material. But it's not completely true because we are in a district, we, are, we know this type of material from other locations. In this case, we are talking about greenstone, we are talking about gold, not talking about zinc or um, BMS or something like that. So, as exploration geologists, we could understand basically what is the type of processing for this material, even in other operations close to the to our project. Based on this, we could ask to the processing guys in our company, if they are, and ask, okay, man, please tell me one, two or three key, key topics, key parameters that could, might affect a, a possible uh, processing of this type of material. This is a greenstone, this is gold, similar to, I don't know, this other deposit, please tell me two, one, two or three, no more. And this guy can say maybe, ah, oh, so you, you know, in this process, in this operation, we have problems with the size of gold, the liberation, association. So my advice is, it is not necessarily to spend too much money, but we could uh, learn from the previous experience from other people in a similar district, similar um, deposit. Ask for a couple of parameters, key parameters, and make some, take some, some should we say representative samples, maybe five, I don't know, three, ten, and that's it's enough probably for, for starting. That is me, my I advice. So in, in short, each stage requires uh, an understanding. In the exploration, it's very basic. We don't need a geometrical unit model, a block model with uh, geometrical parameters is not necessary. It's not, it's too much but a few tests or meteorological characterizations that can we can we give us a preliminary uh, result about possible processing i think is the right way of conduct or taking to in account this problem I don't know if I am I clear enough, Masni, with my response. Uh, I think um, this is uh, yes. I, I I agree that we can uh, actually use parallels from 
nearby properties if exist. And uh, that being said, that the like I told you before, the as a geologist, we we respond on first on the actual rock, a piece of rock that we have from drill core, which is not that much compared to the um, the actual deficit. And like I previously mentioned, the usually the data that we have, the rock that we have, is only a um, only not very much. And usually the um, the difference in the physical rock that geologists can pick up. Oh, this is a different uh, thing. It, usually, it's it's uh, the difference is very subtle, if any. Uh, of course, we can use the um, the more sophisticated um, and understandably more expensive uh, analysis, a different analysis, the multiple elements ICP or uh, for every samples, but that, that, that will be very expensive, right? And um, usually uh, the, we, the geologists react based on what we can see from the rock not what we imagine we'll see in the future. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, it's clear, but the, maybe this is a common problem with the gold, because gold is, even we can, usually we can't see it, so it's, it's really complicated. But, uh, um, just to reinforce, maybe it's as simple as talking with the processing guy. Hey, guy, hey man, what do you think about this? Do you think would be a problem with this material? That kind of questions. The worst is for free, so it's <laughs> not really complicated. Yeah, that's... Okay. Any 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 yeah. anyone else? Any other questions, guys? Thanks, Thomas, yes, for the yes. question and discussion. Yes, please, uh, Katut. My question: Any advice uh, for in geometrology best practice? In handling for ore clay at hip place operation. Ketut, can, could you repeat, please? Sorry. Yeah, Christian, I want to ask about do you have any advice for geol metallurgy best practice in, in, in handling the ore clay material that? Uh, of that producing operate that producing in hip leach operation for hip leach hip leach hip leach yes yeah do you have any advice for your metallurgy best practice in hip leach operation especially when we handling with the ore clay <clears throat> okay Okay. Um, hip lip, hip leach operation is a um, very particular um, topic for geometallurgy, and I could um, say something about the best practice. Mm. It's maybe too. It's a very wide question. Um, wow, <laughs> best practice. Maybe I could, uh, we could uh, define something like that and share with the attendees. 
uh, as an email, we can distribute an email about best, best practice, probably. It's a, I think it's really, really wide question. I could say in this moment, a couple of um, specific issues I faced during my, car my career in this uh, type of operations, if you want. Okay? <laughs> By the moment. Um, Thank you. Uh, first of all, granulometry. It's when, when uh, for instance, the mm, minus 100 mesh, Tyler mesh material, when that material is abundant, it's really, really complicated to reach the necessarily uh, flow in the heap leaching. This is the first one. So, if for resolve that type kind of problem, the blending of material is the key. Blending material from these areas with clays or limonite with areas with more fresh rock is very, very efficient. The problem with heap leaching is when we put this material with this fine problem, it's done. We can do nothing <laughs> about it. So it's very, very, very important from the operation, from the, the work control, uh, make this proper blending of material. This is the first one. Uh, the second one, it's uh, very, very important, is about the... Um, in my country, in Chile, we have experienced some problems with the deposition, the final deposition of these uh, tails. Because of this fine material, these clays and limonites, with the, with the time, in the month of the years, these materials collapsed. So, your mechanical studies for heap leaching deposition, final deposition, is very important for environmental, as an environmental topic. And um, what else? I could, I could say that if you are thinking in leaching sulfides, uh, um, the 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 um, the leaching with salt, okay, uh, with salt, it's the it's the new methodology, shall we say, in my country. So everyone, every, almost every operation in my country is going to the salt leaching. And the recoveries for secondary sulfide or even primary is getting better. So it's uh, increasingly getting better results using salt. And, and I'm going to um, write this uh, your question about the um, the best practice in leach, and I can send to Abdul probably to to distribute. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Is there any Is there question, any Christian? Or you want to discuss something about uh, what we have talked? I... Yes. Question for Mulan. I have a question from your slide that you mentioned uh, the difference between geometallurgy and metallurgy sample sampling. Okay. And then you mentioned about the standard metallurgy test. What is the standard metallurgy test? And then it's difficult to build the communication between the geologists and the metallurgists. So from your experience experience how can you make it simple to 
communicate between the geologists and uh, metallurgists. Thank you. That's it's an excellent question. Actually, um, um, for respond to the last part of the question, it's um, the best way to do this, this communication is make a contract, shall we say, like a, a document mm -hmm. that could be in, in which document Every part it's clearly it's clearly stated how every part is participant of this process. All the um, all the all, all the areas make an agreement. So this document or flow sheet is a like a um, formal way to put this uh, paradigm or methodology in practice. Okay. Yep. So it's not 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 only like oh, okay we want to be friends like uh, no it's more like this is my uh, responsibilities. I'm going to expect this for you. All of this is clear in a document in a flow sheet. And we want to, and we have a vision, a mission and a vision. Our vision is change these problems we have in the past and move to this um, direction to this to reach this goal. And about the, I, I can share as well. I can. I'm gonna write that one. This. Um, this um, agreement, this type of agreement, okay? 